Hello everyone, how are you? It is Lori. I'm here to do a pick one reading, okay? I want to start though by saying happy birthday to whoever may be cel celebrating a Libra birthday today. My wish for you is a year filled with fun, laughter, money, excitement, and whatever you desire. All right, I hope you have a beautiful and blessed day. Let's get into your pick one reading. Today I have decided to do something a little bit different. Each pile is different, okay? So each set of cards is completely different. Nothing here is repeated here. However, each and every one of you did get a large spirit animal, a small spirit animal, and a tea leaf blessing. Now you can see there are differences here. So you can pick any pile that you want, or if you so choose, you can watch one, you can watch two and claim them, you can watch all three and claim them. That's completely up to you, okay? And there may it may resonate each and every one of them for each of you. All right, so I'm going to time stamp these. So that all you have to do is go to the description box or click up on your uh, remote and it will show you the different chapters, okay, which is where these things start. All right, so let me go ahead and move this stuff out of the way and we'll get started on pile number one over here, okay? Hello, everyone. All right, this is for those of you who made choice one, choice pile one. A little secret, I was hiding one of the cards from you, so you are getting a ruined stone card here to start your reading. All right, this is day gauze, okay? And it's daytime, success, daylight, hope. Those are the key words with transformation and success. The common theme here is this is symbolic in Norse traditions as increase, growth, stamina, prosperity, good health, general well-being, optimism, and it is also associated with successful outcomes. Keep your focus on a positive outcome and the light in the situation as much as possible and beautiful blessings will come your way. So day gauze, okay? Beautiful message there. Um, I am going to start, well, which way should we do this? I think with the angel whisper here. All right, so this says true love. This love that you are involved with or about to receive is a love that is once in a lifetime. Let me grab my book here. Yeah, I'm doing it backwards. I piled all my books the opposite way, thinking I would start with the small ones, but I was called to start back here. So this is card 10, by the way. And let's see what card 10 says for you. So I do feel like some of you are going to have a new romantic relationship or you're taking your personal relationship to a new level. I'm getting something here about a unique relationship. Very unique, very different. Um, it could be an age difference or just the way you two literally are so compatible that people think you're brother and sister or sister and sister or brother and brother, whatever, instead of um, romantic partners. Not in, not in a negative way, just that you're that close, that you get each other that well, that, you know, like you can finish each other's sentences. And if you haven't met that person yet, you may be about to. All right, so let's see what this says. Oh, that's card 30. Wow, I wish I could read. All right, so there's a message here. Treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply, especially if that's what we want from them. All right, so actually this is card 30, which is a three, which is all about unity, working things through, uh, being of a like mind, being appreciated and appreciating. All right, so this says, this love is once in a lifetime. This relationship is part of your life's plan. Unconditional love is easier said than done, however. Remember the love aspect of your partnership. If it is a true relationship, the connection will be almost perfectly balanced. Maintaining the love in a relationship takes a little bit more than just good intentions. 
Positive intentions are a solid first step, but it is better to learn how to nurture your relationship each and every day. This is, a, is vital to staying connected and growing your love into a strong bond. That's how you grow together instead of growing apart. When you communicate daily about how you feel about each other, what's going on in your lives, and you talk to each other, you can grow together. If you don't do those things, you will eventually, pro well, not eventually, you don't have to. You most likely will go in different directions. And that's when there are complications in the relationship, when you have two totally different life goals. All right, so be open to love when it shows up in your life. See, I do feel like there's a new romance coming in. It could also be a good, strong, solid friendship. Be authentic and avoid changing yourself to make the other person happy. Okay, do not try to impress them by being something you're not. Don't talk differently than you do. Don't dress differently than you normally do. Just be yourself. When you can be yourself from day one, there's nothing to hide. There's no, no pretenses to keep up and the relationship can develop much more easily. All right. So this says, make sure you are voicing your values. All right. True love is elusive and it is very rare. Look for someone who meets your emotional, spiritual, and physical needs. That's that three that I was talking about. In this card, the young lover's eventual kiss might be portraying a true love kiss. The sparrow on the left may indicate elevated thoughts and standards. The sparrow encourages you to keep your heart light on and release heavier energies. The child next to the sparrow represents childlike ideology and is a message to enjoy the moments as they present themselves. The pair of unicorns at the head of the partner on the right invokes the magical energy surrounding the relationship that you aspire to achieve. All right, so that's a beautiful message. Let's see what it is your soul wants you to know. By the way, this is pile two and choice three, okay? Just so you are aware of that. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Playfulness, it just mentioned that over here to enjoy the moments as they come. And your soul says here, playfulness, my joy is the greatest gift that I can give to others. Everything's fleeting. Everything's temporary. We have a sandcastle and water right next to it, okay? So it's possible this sandcastle could be washed away very easily, but you've got the bucket to keep it going to keep adding on, to build it, to change, to transform, which we heard back here, okay, in the Ruin Stone card. Let's see what um, your soul wants you to know about playfulness. It says here that the meaning of this card is to allow your inner child to play today. Enjoy yourself and have some fun. Embrace your innocence. Your soul wants you to know that playfulness is absolutely necessary for your health and your well-being. It's as important as the food that you eat and the thoughts that you think. If your responsibilities and hard work have made this a low priority for you, it's time to have some fun. Give yourself a break and nurture your spirit by doing something crazy or zany or just plain silly. Listen to music and dance by yourself happily. Make silly faces, invite friends over for an afternoon party, a tea party, or go for a drive with no particular destination and see where you end up. It could be a lot of fun. All right, so keep that in mind, playfulness, ease, being in the moment, enjoying life as it comes at you. When you do those things, you bring more of that energy towards yourself. Let's go ahead and see what the enchanted map says for you. Card number four, stability. This is spirit of the place. All right, so this is about being again in that moment. Every, every aspect of life, of the universe, has its own energy, okay? And if we can create a positive energy in the moment, then that spirit of energy, of playfulness, of happiness, of positivity will grow in that place. 
Let's see what Spirit says about this. Or I'm sorry, let's see what uh, Colette Baron reed <laughs> says about the spirit of place. She says, authenticity is the essence of power. Authenticity, being yourself, being real, no pretenses, is the real power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it. Just as we have a soul, the plants, trees, birds, mountains, and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, which she has done, it says that the answer to your question is in the overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about a struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your question relates to finding love, then embody that love that you are seeking rather than longing for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlies your question, and then you can name it, you will discover the answers that you've been seeking. Your greatest power is in your authenticity. All right, so the, there is a reverse to this, and I am being asked to read this to you. So for whoever this is meant for, do not get entangled in details or desires that obscure the truth of your situation. Step back and ask yourself, what is the real nature of what I'm asking, what I'm seeking, what I'm looking for? Even seductive hidden agendas cannot conceal this. Trust your intuition. The spirit of place is whispering in your ear. Trust your intuition. You hold the power to tell the truth first to yourself and then to the world. You can always distinguish between an essence that is true and one that is made up or fake. Be honest with yourself and remain willing to let your situation be revealed for what it really is and not what you want it to be. An apple can never become an orange, just as a dog will never become a bird. Are you trying to change someone or something to meet your needs, to serve your purposes? Only when you see things as they really are will you find the true treasure. Oh my goodness, that was definitely soul-inspiring. All right, we've got an angel answer here. I'm going to skip this and give you a chance to think about a question that you would like one answer to, and this will be from the angel answers. In the meantime, I'm going to continue on and get you your, your Zen Oracle message, which is new vision. Look at how much energy is in this card. Let's go ahead and see. I don't know the Zen Tarot messages as clearly, but boy, this is like trying something new, doing something different, unique opportunities here. Put that beautiful, positive energy out there. All right, let's see if I can find this for you here. This is going to be good. I have not seen this card um, in my readings. I use this as an oracle uh, on a daily basis. So I have not personally seen this one yet. I'm almost there. I can feel it. There we go. Here we go. New vision. All right. So this says, when you open up to the ultimate, immediately it pours into you. You are no longer an ordinary human being. You have transcended transformation. You have risen. Your insight has become the, ins the insight of the whole existence. Now you are no longer separate because you have found your roots. Otherwise, ordinarily, everybody is moving without roots, not knowing from where their heart goes on receiving energy, not knowing who goes on breathing in them, not knowing the life juice that is running inside them. It is not the body. It is not the mind. It is something transcendental to all duality. And this is called Bhagavat. The Bhagavat in the ten directions. Your inner being, when it opens, first experiences two directions. The height and the depth of something. And then slowly, very slowly, as this becomes your established understanding, you start looking around 
and you begin spreading out into all other eight directions. And once you have attained the point where your height and your depth meet, then you can look around to the very circumstance circumference of the universe. Then your consciousness starts unfolding in all 10 directions, but the road has been won. Now, let me see what this says over here. The figure on this card is being born anew, emerging from his earthbound roots and growing wings to fly into the unbounded. The geometric shapes around the body of the figure show the many dimensions of life all at the same time available to him. The square represents the physical, the manifest, the known. The circle represents the unmanifest, the spirit, pure space. And the triangle symbolizes the threefold nature of the universe, manifest, unmanifest, and the human being who contains both. Now you are, you are presented with an opportunity to see life in all its dimensions, from the depth to its heights. They exist together, and when we come to know from experience that the dark and the difficult are needed just as much as the light and easy, then and only then we can begin to have a very different perspective on the world. By allowing all of life's colors to penetrate within us, we become more integrated. We become more expansive, more connected. All right, beautiful message there. Let's go ahead and see what your angel answer message is here. It says recovery. Now, I just got an instant message of you will be recovering something that was lost maybe years ago, but something is going to come back to you. It could be an understanding. It could be a physical object. It could be a person. It could be anything. Let's see what the book says with this. Recovery. Now, I'm also hearing if you have been out of a relationship, like you have been missing a romantic partner or a friend that you can count on, whatever it is that you don't have, and you've been um, broken hearted by that relationship, loss of a job, friendship, romantic partner, um, pet, whatever it is, you, you've healed. You've already healed, okay? And if you're not completely healed, you are healed enough for you to advance forward in your life again. Do not hold yourself back. You're being asked to go ahead and expand into the new vision. All right, so let's see what recovery says for you. Opened up to the page next to it. This is a period of recovery and healing for you. The challenging emotions that you've been dealing with are about to fade away. Although it may be difficult to see right now, there is a jo joyful future playfulness waiting for you. But for now, take the time that you need to regain your strength. This card can, may also represent that your recovery is nearly finished or even already complete. Send words of gratitude above and begin planning for the next exciting phase of your life. How beautiful is that? And confirmation, this whole message has been confirming each thing that was said before it. All right, let's take a look at your large spirit animals um, message. As you can see, you got two. Um, they came out that way when I was shuffling, so that's what you've got. Everybody else only got one. All right, let's go ahead and see what your first one is. 37, lion spirit, be generous of spirit. This is a 10, okay? Maybe that's the 10 I was feeling earlier. And then you also received card 24, which is a 6, Electric Eel Spirit. Bring your ideas to life. Use your new vision. Expand. Grow. Get. Follow your passions, your desires here. This Be Generous of Spirit it feels like allowing forgiveness, allowing yourself to accept the dark and the light within you, within the world, within the universe, within other people, to allow it, to understand it, okay? Be kind to yourself and allow yourself to heal. And with this electric eel, I already pointed out, spirit saying, now is the time, okay? You're headed for... Um, 
increase, growth, your stamina should be building, good health is coming back, even just overall well-being by having optimism, okay? Keeping your focus on a positive outcome and the light in a situation as much as possible will bring you the manifestations you desire. Look, I opened up to the page before this card too. So there's something about the page before or the page after. What happened right before or right after a situation for you. A healthy ego means you ease God's order instead of edging God out. Lion spirit's appearance is a reminder that you have been given the gift of pride and a healthy sense of your worth to express your divine, authentic self in a unique way. Now, I said authentic self and unique way. There's the unicorns here in this loving relationship. You are both the king and the queen, both sides, okay? The light, the dark, the duality. Secure in your prosperity and wisdom and generous of spirit as you help others. Take pride in your ability to serve from your heart. Contentment with what you have, gratitude for that, right now allows you to use your resources wisely as you are giving to others in ways that educate, heal, inspire, delight, or just comfort, okay? Be proud, but remember to stay humble. Practice gratitude on a daily basis, and you will find that the accolades and praise that come to you are no match for the joy that is within you at knowing what you have been able to do for others. Lion Spirit knows there is a great vast savanna before you and many people who will benefit from your healthy expression of your unique set of gifts if you choose to work in partnership with spirit, removing the ego. All your relationships can flourish as you express your worth and your generosity of spirit with humility and kindness. What a blessing you will be to everyone. Beautiful message there. Let's see what card 24 says for you. Opened up to card 30, which is Grasshopper Spirit. Take a leap of faith. Reading 30 there. All right, let's see. I can't get to this one. Okay, so it was easy to get before. It was easy to get after. But being in the here and now may be a trick for you. I can't. I just can't seem to get to the right page. <laughs> that might be the trick right there. Okay. E past was easy. For uh, the future, not worrying about the future, but being in that here and now, that playfulness, okay, the spirit of the place, that may be the, the challenge for some of you. All right, Electric Eel Spirit says, bring your ideas to life. Seemingly out of nowhere, the jolt of Electric Eel Spirit appears to awaken you to a great big idea that you are meant to explore epiphanies and aha moments are gifted to you at this time so please celebrate your life has the potential for profound transformation again transformation inspiration is rising quickly within you electrifying you so that you can't wait to get started bringing these ideas to life you've got that new vision the revelations you experience now are meant to set you on a new path. So please do not be afraid to act. Take that leap of faith. Explore, examine, and do not fear the changes that may come. Because Spirit wants to shower you with love, success, abundance, and hope. Okay? For you to experience everything that you desire. And that's all here in that Dagoz Ruin card too. Now is a thrilling time of epiphanies, inspired ideas, and innovation, new visions. This is a wondrous sign for you today, my love. Please take heed of this message. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love that for you. Love it. All right, let's go ahead and see what your small animal spirit is. <laughs> Look at that inventor, the raccoon, innovation, new visions. Decide on what you really want. You have the ingenuity to claim it. Avoid being the trickster and just 
be your authentic self, okay? Because you have many, many roles and you can handle them all very well. Now, something I just heard, somebody just literally said, I picked these cards. No, I did not. And if you've been on my channel at all, you know I do not pick cards ahead of the readings for you. Each of these cards, was, decks was shuffled and they were fanned to in order to get the card message for you. I do not see these until I turn them over at the same time that they are revealed to you. Just so you know that and you can be as inspired and as excited as I am by these messages. Let us see what your blessing for this oracle message is. Pineapple, reconciliation. So somebody out there, okay, somebody out there has had a situation, whatever it is, and is going to, you're going to overcome the situation, whether it's a romantic, friendship, business, whatever it is you're trying to heal from. Look, recovery and rec reconciliation. It's going to work out. Reconciliation means to reset it to what it was, to make it whole again, okay? To reconcile it, to bring it into balance. That is beautiful, and that is Libra energy, especially to bring it into balance. All right, I do want to finish this with an angel number for you, so I'm going to get you an angel whisper number. Let's go ahead and see what this is. Oh, you got two cards in here too. All right, so your first one is 666, Reflection. When you allow time for re reflection, you allow yourself to see where inner changes are needed. This may be a really good time for you to look at your beliefs and ask, is this working for me? Is this what I really believe or is this other people's opinions? Okay, can you release this? Reflect, refocus, and readjust so that you can have that new vision. Your positive affirmation here is, as I refocus on what serves my highest good, I feel myself changing into my highest self. Oh, that is beautiful. And look at this. You've got one, 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 three ones. Three sixes, three ones. That is seven, seven, seven. And that is a lucky number for you guys. That is good fortune. Oh my goodness. And look at this. One, one, one is destiny. Angels are whispering, follow what you feel. Listen as your intuition helps to guide you to what you are manifesting. The inner whispers are helping you to create everything that you desire. Listen, lean in, and follow your soul. Your positive affirmation here is, life is always happening for me. I am allowing myself to lean into what feels good. This is your destiny, my loves. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you're interested in a personal reading, please email me and I will send you all the details. Until our energy crosses again, much peace, love, and happiness. Bye-bye. Hello to all of you who chose number two, pile number two, deck number two, whatever conglomeration of number two. This message is for you. I am going to start with the hidden card here, which is a ruined stone card. Everybody did receive one. You've got so we low, okay, which is sun, light, energy, and success. I want to backtrack. I have not seen any of these cards beforehand. I They're revealed to me as I flip them over for you, just so you know that every deck was pre-shuffled and the cards were fanned and a card was chosen without me knowing what it was. All right, just want to set that straight. Okay, so you have Sawilo, which translates into the sun. Um, this is about light, energy, good health, and success. This is symbolic of the sun and life, sustaining energy that is provided by the sun's light, okay? Everything is illuminated. Light has victory over the dark, clarity and healing through illumination and positive energy. This is definitely about healing energy too. So, so we low, sun, light, energy, and success, all right, some say Sunna, okay, Sunna. 
All right, we have these different cards here. I will spread them out so you can see what to expect. And I will be turning each one over individually and telling you the message. All right, we have water magic. So there's healing powers here, okay? This is beautiful. This is health energy, healing. Let's see what uh, the book says about this. So that would be water energy. Let's see what page that's on. Water energy and water magic is on page 84. So that's a three. You know, it's a 12 turn two, three. All right, and this here says, this card is telling you to make a magical connection to water. You can do it by following the exercise, by doing anything that makes you feel the element of water in its more than mundane form. Even drinking a glass of water can be magical if you focus on sensing the molecules being absorbed by your body and becoming a part of your very own essence. And what I'm hearing here is you can literally picture that water going into your body and cleansing out all negative energies or bringing in all positive, healthy, vibrant, vital energy to your body and healing anything that's going on in there. Now, those of you who say you don't like water, that I don't drink water, well, I've got news for you. Human beings are 98 or is it 70 percent water no that's the earth 98 percent water human beings are 98 percent water and if you don't put water in you dehydrate you shrink your brain you shrink your brain okay your brain is starving because you're not giving it enough water okay if you can't drink water on its own try to drink water without sugar in it um find something else that goes with it but drinking caffeine with water Caffeine is a dehydrant. It will dehydrate you, okay? So if you would like to be healthy, then you need to start by focusing on what your body requires, okay? And your body requires water. All right, we can't live that long without water. Once our water is depleted, we're gone. We're, we're not here anymore, okay? So water is a powerful force, and it can wear down mountains, or it can create a lake. It brings life to the fields but it can also be violent and impossible to control. This is not an element to be taken for granted, as you will know if you have ever been thirsty or lived through either a drought or a flood. Most of the time, though, water is our friend, and we can use its power to help us change and transition through various stages of our lives. Water is fluid and flexible and reminds us that we can be that way too. All right, so keep that in mind. Water is vital to our healing, okay? Water is crucial to our health, to our well-being. All right, so make that connection. I would, I love that idea. That just came into my head where they were talking about drinking the water. Um, and I don't remember what they said it would do for you, but I saw it as, I love water. I've been drinking water since I was a child. Drinking water and picturing it filling my body, filling my body with all the healing energy that I require like this. This is how I see it going through my body and just lighting up all the dark spots where anything might negative might be hiding and getting rid of it. Okay. When you put something in, you have to fill that void uh, or vacate. You have to make a vacuum. Okay in order to fill this. And once you fill it with light, then the negative has to leave. Oh, oh, I'm getting so excited about that for you, for myself. Beautiful. I'm going to definitely be practicing that one. All right, let's see what we have next here. I believe this is the Raven's Wand. Yes, this is the Raven's Wand. Changing faces. Look, the duality again here, bringing things out into the light. Victory over the dark, clarity, healing again. I love this. Oh my goodness. All right, so this is changing faces, and it says painted faces brighten any coven festival. And we all wear different faces on occasion, although perhaps not as striking as Lavinia Silverdale's here that we see in this card. 
Masking can help us by covering our vulnerabilities like a shield, such as wearing a brave face during a crisis, or maybe being attentive when we really feel exhausted. A mask can be new clothes or a hairstyle, and these simple things can give us a fresh perspective on ourselves. Would you benefit from stepping out of your everyday routine and becoming someone else for a while? In other words, can you step outside of your negativity, your negative thoughts, the dark things holding you down um, and moving forward? Can you feel every time you say you're tired, can you tell yourself, no, I'm not. I've got a lot of energy. Can you step outside of what you normally do? Get out of that comfort zone and do something that actually will benefit you. All right, so it says here in the reverse, black and white are starkly apparent in Lavinia's ceremonial decoration, but white lies uh, ought to be called gray lies. It's hard to say exactly if they're good or bad. They can certainly spiral out of control. Any lie will definitely spiral out of control and eventually go up in flames. Wanting to protect someone else's feelings is noble. It's, it's honorable, but... To what extent is that actually acceptable? This card may be suggesting the possibility of deception underlying a current situation. Or that maybe you are not willing or you're willfully deceiving yourself about something. So um, unwilling to see it for what it really is. Even if the motive seems honorable. So... Facing the truth, being authentic, being realistic is the best way to, to handle something. You may need to purge those negative things by bringing the balance back in. How can you do that? You can heal through water. Telling the truth, being authentic is always the best way because you don't... Lies need energy. They require energy to stay alive, to keep track of. And our brains, once we move away from the lie... Any time away from that lie creates a gap. It changes reality. And when we try to tell that same lie again, we can't do it. We can't repeat that lie believably. And that's when it all falls apart. So being honest and upfront and facing the reality right from the beginning, bringing, out, bringing everything out into the sun, clears everything up. And now you've got a fresh new start. Beautiful foundation to begin with. All right, let's go ahead and see what your eternal crystal is here. Apophyllite. Ooh, card number three. Connect. Open your third eye and your crown chakras here. All right, let's see what the book says about this. Apophyllite. It makes me think of an apostle for some reason. Somebody who follows um, a belief, a course, um, a doctrine. Let's see what we have here. All right, so Apophyllite's healing energy has come to you to strengthen your natural psychic abilities, get you in touch with your intuition here. It can also bestow you with greater mental clarity to connect with higher guidance from your spirit guides and your angels. Notice the intricate connection between the physical and the spiritual worlds. Calm and ground yourself so that you can hear sense and feel your spirit guides and angels more clearly you can also call upon them to help you to raise your vibration so that you can release any negativity that pa thought patterns or mental blockages once you clear at all that negativity or self-doubt away you will be able to let the positive energy shine in your life there's that duality again but you can't have both at the same time. You can only entertain one energy at a time. If you're feeling negative, you can't feel positive at the same time. I think you get it. Apophyllite is associated with a third eye and your crown chakra. This can be help, very helpful. Sorry. Rewind. It can be very useful in helping you to see the truth of a situation. Look at that. Once you see the truth, you can then act upon it and find a way to move forward towards both spiritually and mental clarity. If the thought of this feels a little daunting, remember that you can ask for help from your angels at any time at all. They will be with you during this whole process 
and you do not ever have to do anything alone. Once the process is complete, you will be filled with a new sense of empowerment and of hope. See, letting it go, you can start a brand new foundation. Hanging on to the negative, it just leaves your life so yucky, just yuck. Let it go. Heal. Tell the truth. Be authentic. Face what's really happening. And I keep, every time I hear part of these messages, a certain part of it, I keep hearing that somebody is in a relationship with something. And I'm strongly getting a romantic partner. And the relationship is not good. You have feelings for them. They don't have feelings for you. You might be in the relationship, with, you know, living together, dating, but they're not in it. You're in it. They're not. Okay. What's the truth of the situation? If they're not giving what you what you need from the relationship, it's not a relationship. It's not a healthy relationship. All right. Open your third eye and your crown chakras. Admit the truth to yourself. Heal from what's happening. Get that clarity so that you can heal and move forward in a beautiful, blessed way. All right, let's see what she who, the L key card is. This is she who battles Abalaka, Epanalaka. Justice, fierce, and commitment. Let's see what the book says there. That's, I mean, that is strong energy, but it's also choosing your battles, knowing when and where to give your energy. Can you be strong by not drawing your angry words, by not challenging uh, the other person, by not accusing them of the fault? Can you accept what is your own? Oh, let's see what Abelonica says. I think she's like the first card in here. No, yeah, oh, she is too. Eterna comes up after that. All right, so it says, when Abanalaka, she who battles, appears as she is in this reading, you would do well to gird your loins. She is the Zulu word for fierce. She is not one to take the easy way out. Her preference is a dead eye stare straight into the depths of whatever challenges her. Her bronze armor and war ribbons match her ferocious gaze. Yet at the same time, she's wearing a soft white dress and it billows in the breeze. And she also holds her sword back. As fierce as Abinalaka is, she is equally patient and knows sometimes the best strategy is to fight a battle with words or silence, not swords, restraint not aggression. Abinalaka is here to help you face your current challenges. If you decide to stand and fight, remember her unwavering focus and complete commitment to the situation. Abinalaka knows if she is first victorious in her own heart, she cannot be beaten. But there is a great saying, you do not have to attend every argument to which you are invited. In other words, just because somebody challenges you, you don't have to engage in that. You don't have to take part in that. You don't have to answer them. You don't have to yell or scream or any of it. You can just let it be. And silence is such a strong, strong weapon sometimes. All right, you are never diminished by refusing to argue with anyone. In fact, it's often takes greater strength to walk away from an arm argument, lay down your sword, say, I'm not participating in this. It, that's the stronger weapon right there. By doing so, you may even learn something that changes the entire situation. Your enemy, whoever you're fighting with, may turn out to be an actual friend or a teacher rather than a taker. And I'm also hearing a lesson learned, okay? So um, keep that in mind as you approach each situation. These could be tests of your own determination to make the changes in your life that you say you want. Do you really want them and are willing to do what needs to be done? Can you hold your peace sometimes? All right, whichever path you choose, 
Stay fiercely committed to your decision. If you choose to be silent, be silent. Stick with it. If you choose to walk away, walk away. Don't engage, okay? So here I'm. there's a couple of questions you can ask yourself that may help you to deal with this. The first one is, what is this battle at hand? And do I need to take it on? What is happening here right now? And do I even really need to respond to that? A lot of times when we respond to somebody who accuses us of being less than or not good enough or doing wrong and we know we've done no wrong, when we respond to them, we're giving in to what they're saying. So if you can be silent about it, if you can let it go, you gain respect, especially from people who are witnessing the situation. That person, if you just simply say to them, oh, did you intend to hurt my feelings? Oh, did you intend to make me feel little? Oh, and then just leave it at that. They're either going to come back with, yes, I did. And then they look bad. Okay. Don't say anything after that. Just let it be. Um, or you can say, would you repeat that back to me? And then they stop and they think about it and they're like, uh, no. Okay. And that's because they don't want, they don't really believe what they're saying or they can't back it up. They don't want to look like a fool in front of other people. Okay. And if they do repeat it, then again, say, okay, did they, did you mean to hurt me with that? Did you mean to try to make me feel little and just leave it at that? Okay. So choosing your battles, first of all, Admitting the truth to yourself is the biggest way to overcome a, a battle, overcome a challenge. All right. Face it honestly. Beautiful. Let's see what we have here. And I forgot to get the book for this one, so I'll have to look for it. But let's see what we've got. Protect your boundaries. Fits right with your reading here. Card number 17, which is an eight, which is all about the self. Okay. Um, definitely hang on to yourself, who you are. If these beliefs no longer work for you, let them go. Heal, move on. What do you want to fill your cup with? Okay, protect yourself, your boundaries. Look at this, these two cards going toe to toe with each other. I've got my boundaries and I'm going to hang on to them. And Abinalaka is standing by you in support. She's reminding you to have a steadfast gaze, to go into battle silently, okay? Choose your words, choose your battles, choose what you do want to defend. And that should always be yourself, okay? Your, your principles, your morals, your self-respect. Let's see if I can find this really quick. I did. This is called the Wisdom of the Wild Things Oracle. And let's see what uh, their message is here. Protect your boundaries. Every creature needs boundaries, but boundaries in and of themselves are never enough. They need to be protected. Tooth and claw, axe and dagger. Call upon your inner fear, fierceness to guard your boundaries and to protect your heart and your space. Snarl, growl. You're allowed to be feisty and fierce when protecting your boundaries and your personal sovereignty. There's a time and space for compromise and cooperation. Now is not that time. Take an Aikido class. Learn fencing. Take up an activity that helps you understand and embody that warrior stance. Look at that, Abinalaka. It's not about physical defense. It's not about fighting. It's not about yelling, screaming, hitting anybody, okay? It's about embodying the energy of protection, knowing who you are. You have plenty of empathy, compassion, and understanding come easily to you. All right, now practice the fierce art of defending yourself and protecting what your boundaries. Invoke fierceness as your ally. Do you believe in your own principles? Protect that. Protect yourself, my loves. What an interesting reading this one has been. Let's go ahead and see what the uh, large spirit animal is for you here. Oh, look at that. Card 33, which is horse spirit. Freedom is yours. Absolutely. You're setting yourself up. You're allowing the, 
the shadows, the darkness, the negativity, the lies, you're letting all of that go. And when you do, the freedom comes to you. A lighter energy, a healthier energy, clarity, um, healing through illumination, okay? Through admitting the truth. Beautiful. Ooh, oh my goodness. All right, let's see quickly here. I don't think there's much that needs to be said with this one. Horse Spirit has appeared to tell you that you are gifted with a spirit of movement and of freedom. It is time for travel and adventure, whether that means a trip somewhere or taking a mental journey, one of freedom of choice. Horse Spirit reminds you that no matter the circumstances, you have free will and you, you have choices that you can take to move far away to a better place, a better situation, a better state of being. For there is no one but you to rein in your willpower to make a different decision. You are capable of making powerful choices that will affect your life for a long time to come. All right. If your question is about a relationship, you can set your heart free to experience love in any and all of its forms. Spirit whispers to you that the gift of freedom is yours if you allow yourself to break out of your situation that you're in now. Break free from the lies. Break free from the ego trip. Break free from the stubbornness and comfort zone. Break free from the perfectionism. Make a move and enjoy the freedom of letting go of the need to control. And that's what holding on to lies is a form of trying to control the situation. All right, so let's see what the small spirit animal is. Sea otter. That's so funny. Beaver came out in your daily reading and I was like, aren't beavers related to sea otters? Not really. Related to otters, maybe. And here they showed up in your reading. How beautiful. So this is happiness, okay? You are going to be feeling that. Be the master of playful living. Release your expectations. Let go of the control and just enjoy the moments. Enjoy every day. Let your worries and concerns fade away and instead choose honesty and love and integrity and authenticity. Surrender to the waves of life. To the good, the bad, the ups, the downs. Just go with the flow. Because your destiny of love is assured. That is beautiful. All right, I have a, an, a blessing here for you. Let's see what that is going to be for you. Look at this. Dolphin. Okay, so we've got more water energy here. Freedom. Taking a leap of faith. This says Financial gain, usually coming from something you did in the past. So I don't care what has happened here. As long as you face the truth and you admit the truth to yourself, you get to heal. You will gain something, okay? And it's going to be so good for you. It could be money. It could be a better relationship. It could be a happier life. Happiness is here. Freedom is here. Financial gain is here. Oh, my goodness. That is incredible. I am going to get you an angel number. Let's see what your angel number is. If you enjoyed this message, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about what's happening here. Are you the receiver or the uh, one that this is all about? All right, let's see what your angel number is. Four, oh, oh, 1144. So you have high vibes, divine intervention here, prosperity, okay? Big ventures, big deals, fated events are coming your way. You are going to be required to have some strong faith here, but it is your purpose. You're heading towards your higher calling. Love or other happiness lurks just around the corner for you. It will be something much better than you are experiencing now and even better than in your wildest dreams. There may be a rare opportunity, an exciting encounter with like-minded people, and this too may exceed your expectations.
Absolutely beautiful. I'm being called to roll one letter die. Victor, Vince, Vance. Um, I'm hearing a honey. Yep, that's what I've got. Okay, my loves, I hope you've enjoyed this message. Again, tickle tap that like button for me and uh, drop me a comment. All right, until our energy crosses again, I'm wishing you much peace, love, and happiness. Hey, everyone that chose pile number three, this reading is for you. I want to start off by saying each and every one of these decks was pre-shuffled and fanned in order to get a card for you. I do not see these cards until I flip them over for you. So I get the message at the same time that you do. Okay. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, welcome, welcome. And I hope that you enjoy this reading. I have a hidden card here that I did not reveal before. So this is a Rune Stone card. And this is Wun Yu. Wun Yu. Which is uh, translates into joy, pleasure, hope. The key words here are harmony, bliss, happy relationships, well-being, and success. The common theme for this is it signifies joy, happiness, great bliss, well-being, prosperity, feelings of extreme joy, blessings coming into your life, a balanced life, joy from higher realms, happy relationships, friendships, success and romantic relationships. So that is beautiful. If you are seeking a new romantic relationship or a friendship or anything else, I do feel it is on its way to you. If you are already in a relationship that feels good, you are expect about to experience an elevation, okay? Even better harmony, even better balance, even better peace. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we have here for you. This is the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle Messages. This is card number 18, and this says, Scared to Fly, the Right Moment, Sensing You Are sensing out the right timing. So something is going to happen here in Divine Timing, and you may feel it. You may be feeling like now is not the time for me to do this. You may not be prepared to get into a new relationship, and that's completely acceptable. Maybe you don't feel it's the time to go out and look for a new job. Maybe it's not the time. It's just not feeling right for you. Um, that is fine, but make sure that you are still opening yourself up to receiving the inspiration for when it is the right time. Let's see what the um, book says about this, okay? Because this, these are very tricky oracle cards. I will say that. Different meanings. Let's see. It's card 18, which is a 9. So there's something about releasing something here, too. It could be releasing your fears. All right, so it says, New life is coming. Spring is stirring. The sap is rising through the barren branches under which she clings. And this fairy is longing to let go and fly forth to tell everything that spring has come to tell everyone that spring has come at last. But she cannot until she feels the life force swell irreversibly. And though she can feel it coming, she knows the time is not quite right yet. This uh, card indicates it is almost time and that you will want to be ready for when that time is right. This fairy uh, being in this beautiful card is awaiting the energetic sign and holding on to the magic itself signals her it is time to take flight. Though she seems a small and lonesome little figure, she can, can and will fly and alert everyone to the coming of the green time, of leaf bud, of the new beginnings, of the new day. But for the time being, the bare tree seems like the only available shelter in this landscape. And it is, if you take the limited view. But who knows what lies beyond? When the right time comes, her flight will activate the change and bring leaf bud and new life to everyone and everything. 
if she times things just right, everything will be okay and the seasons will continue their turning. One beautiful aspect is that she is alone in this timing. She must rely on her fairy sensitive senses and heed no voice but her own and that of the natural world or her higher power. She has direct communication with the planet, and when the time is right, the breeze too will gather force and support her in sending her work and message out into the world. This card is about suspending activity and being in the moment, awaiting that perfect moment, knowing that when you are in that flow, everything will unfold perfectly. Just by being where we are, we may understand so much of where we have been and where we will go. And we can certainly refine what it is that we want, value, and desire. Think of the chrysalis hanging, seemingly static from a branch, fragile and mysterious. It doesn't do anything but become itself. Become who you are by being in this chrysalis-like state by waiting the right, for the right moment to emerge and then share, just like this fairy will do. Transformation is inner before it is manifested outwardly into the world. You must wait for the time to be right, which means there's acceptance, healing that's going on in the meantime. Simply by doing this, you will affect change within your life. Your energy itself will change the situation and your reaction is an indication of great wisdom. It is hard not to react or to project our fears onto others, to blame and take everything personally. Oh, it can be so difficult until we learn the trick. Let us not un underestimate the challenge that comes with this card, okay? To wait for the right time, which of course choosing to act with mastery is not passive. It requires rethinking and challenging the outmoded conditioning that claims not only by rushing in, we can activate our own impact and energy within a situation. The wisdom, very, very challenging wisdom, you are being required to show, demonstrate, learn, and teach is unlike that which the world generally recognizes and respects. It is the strength the power of endurance, and seeming inaction of just waiting. Internally, there is a great pressure to be active, external, creating change. But the energy of this card is inner mastery through demonstrating patience. On a spiritual level, this can indicate the lesson of surrender. Once you understand the precious and timeless nature of being and the fact that time is not linear, you will move forward and into your strength and purpose and divine timing. This little fairy and nature will show you with a clear and natural sign of it is time. You will feel it. You will recognize it. There will be no doubt in you that this is the right moment to open up, to move forward, to express yourself, to shine your divine light. Absolutely beautiful message here. This will bring you that harmony, that peace, that joy. And you know, waiting for the divine to bring things to you, the first few times we try to practice this, oh, it's excruciating. But once we learn and experience that by letting go of control over the situation, that by being patient, by not focusing our intention on what we're waiting for, but what we know will come to us, oh, the blessings, the blessings, the clarity, the understanding, the happiness, the success that we gain from that. Beautiful. Let's see what the starseed message is. Your life is a canvas, okay? Artist, manifestation, creative accountability here. This is about you creating the life of your dreams. What are you going to bring into your life? Okay, when, how? Okay, let's see what this says for you. If I could get there. Your life is a canvas. All right, so the starseed 
message is you are the artist of your life and your life is a canvas. So take responsibility for your ability to create. Earth is known as a planet of manifestation. Your present moment is based on your past thoughts and beliefs. Did you get that? Your present moment is based on what you thought and believed in the past. Your current thoughts determine your future. So what you're thinking now is going to affect what you get tomorrow. What kind of life do you want to create for yourself? What are you being called to create? Reconnect with your manifesting power and align your thoughts, your feelings and actions with a vibration that matches them. It's never too late to start and no experience is ever required to do this. All you need to do is open your heart and your mind consistently in a daily action to do so, okay? Just feel positive. Have the faith that so many of us claim to have, but we don't show true faith because if we showed true faith, we would have those things that we want as soon as we think of them. As soon as we think of them. All right. If you're not sure what you'd like to create, start instead with a feeling of deep gratitude for all that's good in your life right now. You can state out loud what you're most thankful for. I do that every night before I go to bed. I don't just think it in my head. I say it out loud I, as if I'm speaking to somebody in the room. I am. I'm speaking to my higher power. Okay. Look for the good in your life and one thing will be certain. You will find yourself attracting more and more of those good experiences into your world, your life. This card is inviting you to see your entire life as a canvas and the picture that you paint is completely up to you. Color it with your thoughts and your feelings. Create the life that you most want that you most want to live. You may also be called to be more creative in your everyday life. What have you been called to create? We are all creators. And we're not talking about talent or skill here. We're talking about just the ability to manifest what we want. Okay? How can you express yourself more creatively? How can you express yourself in such a way that you bring to yourself that which you desire? All right, let's see what this astrology card says for you. Libra energy. Oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm like not amazed, but I'm amazed. I love it. I absolutely love that this is how it turned out. When I was shuffling this deck, I was like, um, maybe I should pick them a card that would be fitting for their reading. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. I let spirit guide every single card. Okay, I do not ever pick cards, so I don't know why I had that thought. But right here proves to me why I did. Because I don't need to control. I don't need to manipulate it. Spirit brings out what needs to be brought out. So here it is, the Libra card. And I know I just read this to you guys not that long ago. All right, so we're just going to put it back out here for you again so you can hear it, especially if you're new. Like an energetic balancing scale, Libra is always weighing things out and considering the options. Being Venus ruled, its need for harmony creates a love of beauty, favoring traditional laws like proportion and symmetry. Libra is sensitive to its surroundings, not only seeking aesthetic pleasure, but peace, balance, justice, and of course, fairness. Libra's explore themselves through relationship, be it interpersonal or the relationship to the outside world. You Libras use your discernments and connections to give yourself shape, making yourself natural in partnership and dutiful friends. Disliking chaos and arguments, you are caring listeners and judicious problem solvers. In excess this thoughtful energy leads one down the garden path, lost in consideration, indecisive, and paralyzed by choice. Let me read that to you again. In excess, 
this thoughtful energy leads you down the garden path, lost in consideration, indecisiveness, and then paralyzed by choice. Libra is not indecisive by nature. Let me read that to you again. Libra is not indecisive by nature. It can, however, be an easy consequence of the quest for balance, as nothing is perfect in the physical realm. So do not tell yourself that you get caught up in your head. Do not tell yourself that you are indecisive. Do not tell yourself that you're trapped by your thoughts. You're not born that way, okay? It only comes when you choose to get lost in that energy, okay? You don't care for chaos, and being uh, caught up in your head is chaotic, all right? Don't create that for yourself. So stop. Let's stop today, right now. Anyone who's hearing this message and you're a Libra or you have Libra in your chart anywhere, you are not indecisive. You are not paralyzed by choice. And you are not um, lost in consideration, okay? You can clearly, clearly make the decisions you need to by being your true, authentic self. Don't worry about it. I know who I am. I know what I stand for. That is the queen of swords. Head is clear. Heart is clear. Mind is clear. You've got balance on your mind. You welcome the truth, okay? Keep that energy right there. Imagine a house where every room represents a significant part of your life. That's kind of like the wheel, the 12 uh, houses spread that I do. These rooms include, but are not limited to, self-care, work, passions, relationships, and explorations. Take a little bit of time. Walk into each one of these rooms, okay, such as your passions. How does it feel when you think about your passions? How does it feel when you think about self-care? Which ones are vibrant and flooded with light? Do any of these rooms feel dark, dusty, or maybe even just empty? Are any outdated, like man, I really knew, need some new appliances here, okay? Or in need of just cleaning out the clutter and organization. Consider what you give to each of these rooms and aspects of your life and what it gives to you in return. When you walk into that cluttered room, what do you do? Quickly turn around and walk out? Good indication that you need to open that door, clear out that clutter so that you can open it up and fill that room with light. Open the curtains. Sweep it out, okay? Your guides want every room of your house, your soul, your being to be somewhere that you love spending time. Where the energy you give matches the energy you receive back. Your angels want your house as a whole to feel balanced, supportive, and inspiring. And they also want your life as a whole to be a true reflection of your very soul, okay? And you're a divine creature, so you have a beautiful and blessed soul. I absolutely love that this came out here for you because this was feeling a little heavy at moments, but it's all about the timing, knowing who you are, being authentic, creating the life that you actually want to create. All right, let's see what the... Uh, Crystal Tarot says for you, warrior. Oh, that's interesting. That's twice this has come out. The warrior aspect has come out for you Libras today. This is about your focus, your assertiveness, rising to the occasion and taking action. Card 43 is a seven and that is a fortuitous number for you. Okay, so this is the universal folk oracle. I thought it was the uh, Crystal Tarot but it's not. This is card 43. Let's see what is in here for you. Beautiful message. I mean, this whole message is good, even if there's elements of needing to uh, balance things out. Okay, you've got great information here. There is a time to rest and a time to rise. And right now, you might want to summon a great deal of strength of purpose. 
Clean out that one room that's dark and dusty and unorganized. Open up those curtains. The spirit of Boudicca, the legendary Celtic warrior, is with you. Is that Boudicca? Boudicca? She holds steadfast, knowing just the right time. Again, scared to fly, finding that divine timing. She knows the right time to claim her victory and stand her ground during adversity. Her strength is in her soft side, just like Abinalaka in the other reading. And she offers forth various gifts of energy and focus. Breathe with her into the calmness that you need for this difficult phase and explore her many animal totems if you feel drawn to them. Her shield and spear flash with pyrite the ultimate protect, protection stone. It will shield you from negative energies in the environment and within, strengthening your auric field. A true warrior knows when to replenish and gather together the resources that are needed. There may be new challenges at the moment to address and the need to assert yourself or align to a cause. The path of least resistance seems to be a little out of reach as you are pulled to act. Everything will be well if you do so from a place of calm and balance. Take time to clear out and let go of any residual energy between responsive action. Again, clearing out that clutter, cleaning up that room, opening up the curtains. And what happens when you open up the curtains and you let the light in? You feel more confident. You feel braver. You have a new focus. You've got a sense of accomplishment because you have overcome that challenge. And every aspect of your life that you work on and clear out or um, enrich in some way is only making your life better in the long run. So if you're feeling overwhelmed on where to start, pick one aspect of your life and focus on that for a while. All right, let's see what the, what is this called? The Witchling's Book of Spells. And we have Manifestation. I have got to tell you, I was shuffling this deck and this card came out. I put it back in and did the fanning and this is the one that came out. Turn your desires into reality by activating the power of manifestation. Knowing when to act. Knowing fully within yourself that anything you want, you can have. Having that absolute faith that it is already yours. Okay? What do I mean by that? Do you think... Okay, here's what athletes... I mean, very highly successful athletes do. Um... They don't go in and say, I want to be the best athlete. No, they say, I am the best athlete. I am the one who shoots and it makes every basket. I am the one that runs faster than everyone else. And they believe it. They believe it, okay? And they continue to work on it and work on themselves and keep going forward, learning new things, trying new things. But they're confident that they are going to be the winner, that they are going to be the one that comes out ahead of everybody else. And guess what? They do. That's what a true trained athlete does. They focus on themselves. They don't worry about what other people are doing except to find out if there's something that they do that could help them to improve themselves, okay? Everybody who is successful in life stops focusing on other people and what they've got and what you personally don't have, okay? And focuses on themselves, being grateful for the blessings that you have and just moving forward with your desires. Love, love, love this. Let's see what the spirit animal is. Look at that, another seven 34, which is, oh my gosh, it's 43 and 34. Hummingbird spirit, be here now. Being in the present moment, focusing on what you can accomplish right here. Saying to yourself, I am successful. I am confident. I am balanced. I am able to make decisions. That's the energy that you need and believing it and feeling it within yourself. All right. Let's see what the little, oh, wrong one. I forgot to read you, Manifestation, the little poem. Can't miss that. 
The little poems are too cute. They're adorable. All right, let's see what we've got here. Went right past it. And it says here, this is Frangipani. Little Fran has got it all a-going. Her power rides atop the crest. With her inner strength and focus, there's nothing she can't manifest. Energetic signals are radiating from you. Whether or not you're conscious of it, you are always manifesting something. You are a continuously vibrating being and your energy has a magnetizing effect, sending out signals into the universe, in turn inviting energies that are in harmony with your own. If you change your thoughts and your feelings, you can change the energy signals that you are sending out. You can manifest your desires by aligning your vibrations to what you want. This involves increasing your awareness of the here and the now, being in the present moment. I am. So that you can choose the energy that you want to embrace each and every moment of your life. It's all about focusing your intention. You can consciously create the life you want by retraining your mind to focus daily on that which you desire. And your own vibrational pattern will shift into resonance that's compatible with your goals and your desires. With a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience, you'll learn how to sense and control the vibrational frequencies that you are emanating. Okay? It comes right back to your life as a canvas. Okay? how to f find what you want, how to have that balance, how to manifest your dreams, your desires. Beautiful. Let's see what uh, Hummingbird Spirit says. Be here now. Did we just do that? Why do I feel like I just did this? I think I just did this. I'm losing my mind. Nope. Didn't just do this. Okay. The hummingbird's wings beat so swiftly it can hover in seeming stillness as it drinks deeply from a flower. Hummingbird spirit comes to you today to remind you that the beauty and sweetness of life is in the eternal here and now, the timeless present. Here and now you are becoming the person that you wish to, have, to be, to have the experiences that you wish to have. By focusing your energy on the flower before you, your desire is going to be provided. Yes, there are blossoms everywhere and the choices may be dazzling and overwhelming, but Hummingbird Spirit's message is that you have no need to go flitting about in search of something better because everything that you want and desire is right before you. And you will know this as soon as you become still, feeling your deep connection to spirit who loves you unconditionally and will always manifest what you desire. That's incredible. That is incredible message right there coming back to you through and through your whole reading here. I love spirit. All right, let's see what the small animal spirit entered, uh, card is. Wolf, the pathfinder. And I'm noticing here the color similarities again color theory okay you've got it coming through on several cards here release your past and start a brand new journey and you can't start it in the future you have to start it today okay right here with this moment with this breath with this thought you are a teacher and you can help others find their way but find your way first there will always be challenges but your soul is strong Perseverance is your secret power. You have a love that endures. Absolutely beautiful there. But you're the pathfinder. You're the creator. You're the manifester. You're the one who creates what you desire. Okay? And sometimes the wolf has to travel a road alone. They travel in packs, but every now and then, there's the wolf that has to pull itself out for a while, get its head straight, decide what it wants, get its confidence back up, okay, so that it can be the inner warrior, the brave soul who can keep going. 
Let's see what your blessing is for this message. The scales of balance, Libra energy. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love spirit. Love, love, love. Look at this. Double scales here. So there could be somebody new coming into your life who is a Libra. You may already have a Libra in your life that balances you out. You get each other. You understand each other as well as life in general, okay? And you're both. Maybe you are creating a new life for yourself and you're just waiting for that person, waiting for yourself to heal. Don't wait too long once that inspiration strikes. Spirit's there to give you that inspiration. Take a hold of it and take action. Keep your life in balance. Let me get you an angel number here. Let me get you an angel number. These have been beautiful, blessed readings. If you are resonating with this one, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Look at the sevens that just came out. Help yourself, but help this channel grow too so you can keep hearing messages like this. Thumbs up, comments, sharing these messages. Love you guys to pieces. There's another card here too. At least one, if not two more. Four sevens perseverance. This is all about a change of perspective. Look, she's in a tree. She's seeing things from above. Male or female does not matter. She's a fairy or this fairy is a she. This is about taking the time to reflect, focusing on your inner strength, your inner warrior, gaining trust in your own wisdom. And how do you get that? Through enlightenment. There's a need for a change of perspective on whatever has been taking hold of your life. If you want to succeed, you will need to keep going. Okay, keep going. Reach for the wisdom that is within you. And then your intuition will kick in and you will just know what the right next step is. So have faith. Have perseverance. All right, so your next card here is 0909, New Beginnings. Great chances, opportunities, courage. Um, I'm getting something about taking a leap of faith here, okay? Your inner warrior with that courage. Your sense of accomplishment when you manage to manifest what you desire and have balance, peace, harmony in your life. This is the ending, okay? You're close to ending something, closing out a cycle in your life. New things are coming in for you. It could be big love, whether it's big love for yourself, a big romantic, epic romance, or a big friendship, a big awesome career, love, passion that you pursue as a career. It can be any of those things. Look out for that opportunity. It is going to be a game changer. You are wrapping things up, completing something major. And boy, doesn't it feel good to level up. Close out this old chapter because a new adventure is about to come in. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm being asked to give you another ruined stone here. One of the small ones. What have we got? Ooh, the fertility god, creativity, creation, ing. The meaning of this card is you are going to be feeling inspired and hopeful. Follow that enthusiasm because it lights the way toward your true potential. Your point of power is in the present moment. Make a commitment to it now and the future will follow in due course. I love spirit. I love how it resonates, how it confirms and just keeps piling confirmation on top of confirmation. There is absolutely no reverse to this rune card, rune stone, rune message. The tree associated with this is the apple, and the apple tree su provides sustenance. It, su it supplies everything that we need to keep going. Growth. There's the bare apple tree here. Okay? So get that bigger perspective. Think creatively. Fertility is about growth, new things, birthing, creating. Beautiful message. If you've liked it, tickle tap, booper zap the like button, share, claim it in the comments. Consider subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. 
And until our energy crosses again, I'm going to wish you much peace, love, and happiness. If you're interested in a personal reading, email me and I will send you all the details. Until our energy crosses again, I am going to wish you much peace, love, and happiness. Bye-bye.